Okay, memory safety. So what does memory safety really mean? Uh, memory safety, at some level, affects every single programming language, even the, even the safe ones, like you know, Go, Java, C Sharp, because at some point, somewhere, something has to allocate memory in your computer. Buffers are sized. Writing beyond the end of a buffer, well, that can be bad because you might be corrupting your existing program. Reading beyond the end of a buffer, that can be bad because you might be leaking whatever data is adjacent to it in your computer's memory. At best, you'll get a crash. At worst, terrible things happen, and you find out that your beautiful server is now serving out viruses from Turkey. That happened to me back in the 2000s. Let's try not to have it happen to you. And so memory safety issues in C and C++ uh, were very much uh, the driving force behind the creation of Java, then the .NET family, Go, and Rust. Um, Rust itself is very much a response from Mozilla to uh, how well C++ was working out for them. Um, I just saw the question, if it compiles, it works. Is that true? That is a beautiful tie-in to our next set of slides, where uh, you'll see why that can be a problem with some languages. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at some C. Got a nice, simple C program here. Set up a function called main, make an array of five numbers, loop from 0 to 10, print out each of the array items. Now the good news in answer to Angel's question, if it compiles it works, is this compiles perfectly. I even compiled it with minus w all to show every warning that GCC would possibly want to spam with me. It informed me that this program is perfectly fine. I have nothing to worry about whatsoever. So here's the downside. It shows through 0 to 5, it, sorry, 0 to 4, it shows 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's what's in my array. And location 5, 0. Location 6, huge number, 1795, and so on. Location 7, 105. So the problem here is we have got our array sitting on the stack. C has happily let us read to that, and then read on to next, into the next memory location, the next memory location, keep going. We're actually reading other parts of the program. We're reading some data that really shouldn't be in that array at all. Problem here is that C treats uh, arrays as being a pointer. It doesn't even store the end. There's no bounds checking. If you forgot to do the bounds checking, your program is dangerous. You can potentially leak some information. If we were writing to the array, it'll happily let us write past the end of that array. Best case, it crashes. Worst case, we just corrupted our program. That's how a lot of buffer overrun exploits work. So how about C++? C++ is gradually adding a fair amount of safety on top of C. Um, biggest issue with C++ is that it's a beautiful language, but it's a beautiful five languages over the years, because we've got C++, C++ 2011, 2013, 2017, 2020, 2023 is coming on. But they never really remove anything. So over the years, we've got more and more options coming in. And all of them do provide some safety, some of them don't. So let's go ahead and use a vector of integers. A vector is like an array, but it stores it on the heap. Um, it does store the size capacity. It's dynamic. You can grow it. You, um, you can shrink it back down. And we'll just go through 0 to 10, reading the memory. And oh dear, we have exactly the same problem. We list the first five numbers. Then suddenly we see a 1041 and a couple of other big numbers. So now we're reading into the heap outside of what we think this vector should be accessing. And that's not good either. And once again, when I compiled this, I didn't get any compiler warnings. So C and C++ clearly have some issues here. Now there is some good news. C++ has a lot of safety options. You can use them. Um, problem is they're all opt-in. I mean, Strasrup was talking about this. Um, C++ has most of the safety options that you can find in other languages. On Rust, you have to opt out of them explicitly, mark them as unsafe. On C++, you have to remember to use them and opt in. So if you use the at index instead of just index, so in the code here, you've got std vector. And instead of referring to numbers with the square bracket, we're using the at function. It actually throws an exception when uh, it reaches the end of the loop. Thro um, so the program crashes with the error message std out of range. You could be catching that exception. You could be choosing not to crash. And the great news is it will not be handing out information that you it shouldn't be handing out um, because it has done a range check. It's good to go. 
it's safe. So you can opt into safety. The question then becomes, should you have to? So we have a look at Go. Great news is that the Go compiler is smart enough to uh, absolutely not even compile when I try and read outside of the array directly. So you can trick it by using a loop. The loop prints 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, panics with index out of range, which is perfect. It's exactly what you want. Go won't be leaking your company secrets this way. It's always better to panic and to crash and optionally catch the error than it is to inadvertently um, hand parts of your computer's memory out to the internet to do whatever they want with. OK, so looking at Rust, it's kind of similar to Go. You let array equal 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Try and print the fifth element that doesn't exist. Will not compile. The compiler is smart. It does a little bit of static analysis and realizes that index can't be right. The compiler is not that smart, though, that if you build a loop, it doesn't realize that that's going to panic. We'll still let you print. But then it panics with an index out of bounds instead of exposing your data. So perfect. Rust has passed the lowest bar um, of memory safety. It's not going to be letting you read outside of the outside of your variables, you're not going to be. And this protects you from an awful lot of vulnerabilities that have happened over the years, thousands and thousands of them. Um, if you search for buffer overrun, um, out of bounds error, and similar on CVE databases, you will see that over the years, um, these have been responsible for absolutely ridiculous numbers of exploits, vulnerabilities, crashes, and problems over the years. So a uh, question I, quite, I get quite asked quite often is, I'm using Rust because I want performance. But how do you have performance if every single time I access an array, I'm looking for index is inside array.length. I'm adding a uh, runtime check to every single time I access that array. It slows my code down. So first of all, if somebody's telling you that, tell them absolutely that they need to get out a profiler and measure with and without bounds checking. Because modern compilers are really, really smart. They do a wonderful job of realizing, hey, that's a bounds check, figuring out what the upper bound of your loop is, and delighting it to only do the, the bounds check um, a couple of times once if necessary. But that's not always true. So if your profiler tells you that, yes, um, because I am iterating through um, a million array items, I'm accessing them by index each time, doing something with them. That's a million bounds checks, and this is something critical, needs to be super fast. You absolutely can opt out of safety in Rust. But to do so requires that you put the unsafe tag, because now you're opting out of the safety features. And then for your array, you can call get unchecked, hand it the index, and the bad news is, because this is invalid, it prints zero. So we've opted out, and we've chosen to have the same level of issues as C and C++. And that's a good thing and a bad thing. It's a bad thing in the sense that, uh, obviously, you don't want to do this. It's a good thing because Rust is a real systems language, and sometimes you actually need to uh, be able to drop down, do some really scary stuff, because you're interacting with some bizarre hardware. Maybe you're writing kernel modules for some brand new piece of kit that's coming out. And sometimes, hardware doesn't always obey the rules that you expect. And you really do need to be able to write arbitrarily to some piece of memory to do something. Or if you can be absolutely 100% sure that you are not going to violate the precondition, opting out of checking that precondition might get you a small performance boost. Most of the time, you don't need it. Profile, if, you've convinced, if you can convince everyone that you really do need it, you've got that escape hatch to turn the safety off. And please, please, please write and put the unsafe block in, and also write your safety comment saying why you did it, why you opted out, and why you're convinced it's safe. So the next person who comes along and looks at your code says, oh, that's unsafe, and deletes it understands why you did it, and hopefully the performance benefit was real, you can put it back. Hi, I'm Herbert Wolferson, Arden Labs' Rust trainer. If you'd like to see more Rust content, click subscribe to our channel and be notified as it arrives.